welcome to my video of the week. If you recall the very first video I did and released on the website a few weeks ago, you may recall the portrait right behind me because I was actually speaking in front of that portrait. Someone wrote to me and asked me if I could say a few words about that painting. So this is a painting called The Queen Dressed in Gold, Queen Marie Antoinette that is, and it was released and presented to the uh, Parisian public at the art exhibition in Paris, obviously, in 1783. The name of the painter, Elisabeth Vigée-Lebrun. Elisabeth Vigée-Lebrun gained access to Marie Antoinette in 1778. At that point, the Queen had been looking, quite desperately, I might add, to find a painter who could capture her resemblance. She was getting quite frustrated because she could not find anybody and she had even written to her mother, the Empress Maria Theresa, the painters kill me and make my despair. So this is within that context that Vigée Le Brun was uh, asked by the Queen to paint a new portrait. The very first portrait that uh, Vigée Le Brun did represents Marie Antoinette in a hoop skirt. It's known in French as a robe à panier. This is a court dress made of white satin, trimmed with gold, lace, and ribbons. So what is very interesting about that painting, that very first portrait, is the fact that Vigée Le Brun did not try to hide the imperfections of the queen's face. The forehead too broad, the slightly protruding eyes, and the famous half-bored drooping lower lip. Instead, what she managed to do was to capture the very essence of Marie Antoinette's beauty. The coloring of her hair, shading from pale blonde to pale red, her Greek neck, the um, texture of her skin, her complexion, and as Vigée Le Brun wrote herself, what was most remarkable in her face was the radiance of her complexion. I have never seen any so brilliant, and brilliant is the word for her skin was so transparent that it held no shadows. And indeed, what uh, Vigée Le Brun also managed to capture was the grace of the Queen's movements. And indeed, if you look at the portrait, the Queen seems in movement, like if she has just got up from her chair, the red chair right behind her. A bust of Louis XVI, the King, together with the crown displayed on a velvet cushion, remind the viewer of Marie Antoinette's status. She holds a rose in her hand, one similar to the roses in the vase. The queen was absolutely delighted when she saw the result, when she saw the portrait. She sent a copy to her mother back in Vienna, and she made, from that moment on, she made Vigée Le Brun her favorite portraitist. Now, in 1783, she allowed Vigée Le Brun to include her portrait, that very portrait you can see behind me. So in this painting, what is very, very interesting is the fact that you will not find any attributes of royalty. In fact, the queen is not wearing a formal court dress. So instead, she's wearing a very simple, or what looks to be a very simple muslin dress. She wears a straw hat. The painters paid attention to details the almost translucent quality of the dress, immaculate, the thin layers of delicate material and ruffles, the aerial sash around the waist. The intent was to make the queen more human by offering the viewer greater intimacy. The straw hat helps convey the idea of authenticity and simplicity, but the feather and ribbon are there to remind everybody of the queen's position at the apex of society. The whiteness of the skin, brilliant and transparent, just as Vigée Le Brun described. The way Marie Antoinette is holding the uh, rose in her hands with the smaller finger extended, the dark background with only an elaborate table decorated with gilt bronze mounts are as many indications the queen has picked the rose from a bouquet rather than from a field. The understated charms of the portrait were wasted on the public, however, the public felt that the queen had lost all dignity, that she was dressed up as a serving maid. In fact, according to an art critic at the time, Marie Antoinette violated the fundamental law of this kingdom, which is that the public cannot suffer to see its princes lower themselves to the level of mere mortals. 
The scandal was such that the portrait was has to be removed and replaced by the famous Marie-Antoinette à la rose. The queen wears a blue-gray silk dress and rich pearl jewelry, attributes more in line with those of the Queen of France. Unfortunately, the damage was done. If you like that video, or if you have any questions you would like me to answer, feel free to write to me on the website or on my Facebook historian pages. Thank you very much.